Yeah, and uh, cartoons and advertisements in the National Enquirer. <laughs> and probably most of you haven't heard of Royal Robertson. He's not like uh, uh, Rob, uh, what's his name, Ramirez or um, Henry Darger. He's he's not quite that popular because his work is actually somewhat brutal and very graphic. It's it's um, usually about violent acts against man, nature versus man, or the end of the world or the apocalypse. And there's like uh, uh, planets exploding and people running away from hurricanes and all this like death and doomsday kind of stuff. Um, but there's also really beautiful pastoral scenes amidst all of that where he, he draws himself um, fishing or going on a boat trip or hanging out uh, in his yard. Um, uh, Royal suffered from uh, schizophrenia, and because of his mental illness, uh, he eventually drove out his family and his wife, and he spent the last few decades of his life alone in isolation, and his, he basically covered his house with all of his signs and with all of his paintings and shut himself off from the world. And he just, um, he drank beer and ate fried chicken and painted all day, every day, for years and years and years. Um, and um, he was visited only by a few um, curious um, artists and art collectors um, who had heard about him and wanted to uh, see what he was working on and wanted to um, give him money and give him painting supplies and food and stuff. But otherwise, he didn't really have any friends. And um, he didn't get treatment for his mental illness. And I think it, over the years, his health declined. And he died in 1997 of a heart attack in the midst of having um, a, a very cosmic vision. He was running out in the yard and screaming for his wife, Adele. And, and then he just dropped dead. And he left behind 12 kids and 20 grandkids and 20 some great grandkids. He's, his family is really huge. But none of them really knew him because he. Uh, lived alone because of his mental illness. He also left behind thousands of really bizarre paintings and drawings. And I learned about him a few years ago. And while I was working on some of this new material, I found Re Royal to be a very fascinating reference, a companion to a lot of what I was working on. Because a, a lot of my new songs were about really basic, primal things like touch and feel and. Um, affection and the physical body, but also uh, I was obsessed with the universe and the cosmos and the end of the world, and sort of like the public versus the private. And I felt very isolated and shut off from the rest of the world while I was working on a lot of this stuff. And so I, I found Royal sort of like a very helpful companion, and a lot of his imagery and his vernacular worked its way into my songs. Um, and so my record is sort of an an homage to him and his his approach and his methodology, because um, I found it very familiar and very um, um, comforting, and to have him sort of as a as a creative companion. And this week is also of, happens to be the week of his birthday. I think he was born on um, on the twentieth or twenty first. It's they're not quite sure when he was born, but they think it was one of those days. Um, so it's his birthday week. Um, and this next song is for Royal. It's a reality check, it's called Get Real. <laughs> Gentlemen, this next song is called Get Real, Get Right. <laughs> Mistaken me for 
for someone else. Get real.